With theaters reopening, the weather is hot, and a lazy summer is about to begin. And we're no different because we sprung this episode together last fucking minute. We're talking movies. We're talking 2021 films. We're looking forward to watching the most. So, Chris, let's get this party started. Boom! Let's get it on! So for myself, I did not do this like top five, like number one, most anticipated. I just literally did it off of earliest release dates, just when they're releasing. What did you do, Chris? Uh, I kind of went the same way. I just picked, I picked the five movies that I wanted. I've got some honorable mentions as well that we'll talk about at the end of the show. Um, but yeah, like what's your, what, what's your, what's your first one on your list? Uh, first one on my list is In the Heights being released on June 11th. Oh, that's in my, that's one of my honorable mentions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Mel Miranda, man, baby. <laughs> Fucking Hamilton. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so it's debuting on HBO Max and in theaters. It's directed by the crazy rich Asian uh, director, John M. Chow, produced by Lynn manuel Miranda, and explores three days in New York City's Dominican... American neighborhood of Washington Heights, based on Miranda's musical of the same name, and it stars Stephanie Beatrice, Anthony Rome, Ramos, and Melissa Barrera. For me, I, I just want to watch a good musical, you know, been stuck at home. I think it'd be nice, and Hamilton kicked ass, so I would like to see what he does with this as well. Yeah, I'm super stoked. I mean, I love Linnell Miranda's work. I love Hamilton, the soundtrack. I saw it in the theater. Like I saw the actual play in Toronto. Uh, one of the few performances before COVID like kind of fucked everything up. Uh, I saw it with my daughter. So that was super awesome. Uh, yeah, it was on my list of honorable mentions uh, along with another musical uh, that I'm just going to throw out there just because we're talking about it is West Side Story. Super stoked for that coming out. Did not make my top five list after watching the trailer, but I am very excited to see West Side Story. Are you going to see West Side Story? That's uh, Steven Spielberg, I believe. Uh, I am. I, I actually like the original a lot, you know. Jets well, the and yeah, the original is fantastic. Jets and sharks. Let's, nom, nom, nom. let's just do that. <laughs> but yeah, it's that movie is not on my honorable mentions, but, um, but continue on. What's your first movie? Okay. Uh, I'm, and I'm, I'm, Fucking 99% sure this is on your list. And since we're just going by release dates, Dune, the remake of Dune by a director directed by Denis Villeneuve, who obviously is uh, from Quebec here in Canada, uh, one of our provinces, if you don't know. Uh, if you did, you're not aware of some of his other big films, like, I don't know, Blade Runner 2049 and Sicario. Um, yeah, I'm fucking stoked for this, man. I mean, we could have a whole podcast talking about david lynch and his weirdness and i mean if uh if any of you guys listening like david lynch could you please fucking explain him to me i have tried to watch david lynch's films multiple times i've tried to put my film hat on and get in there and i'm like i, I including uh twin peaks and stuff and i'm like this guy's fucked stuff is fucked up man although uh his black and white short jack which is on um netflix i've watched like a dozen times so i don't know uh but yeah i'm super stoked for dune uh it's got uh Timothy Chalamet, uh, who's going to be in the French Dispatch. She was in The King. Call Me by Your Name. He's also. I got. I've got a thing with certain actors that I just don't like them for some reason. And for some, Timothy Chalamet, I cannot get into him. He's a good actor. I have no problem with his craft. I just he comes on screen and I'm like, meh. Jesse Pinkman is the or what's his name there? Um, uh, yeah, I think it's, that's his. That's the actor's name, isn't it? Jesse Pinkman or whatever, or Pinkerman or whatever. I have no idea who you're talking about. Anyway, there's I have I, there's always these few couple a couple actors that I'm like I don't like that guy, and so well, then I don't want to see him in a movie. This Jesse guy, what, what was he? What was he in? Well, he was in Vice. He was in Breaking Bad. Uh, he's been in. Well, oh, he he played the uh, FBI guy in uh, Judas and the Black Messiah. Oh, Jesse Plemons. Plemons, that's right. See, I don't okay. even know bother to learn the guy's fucking name. Um, okay. But yeah, he was uh, the lead in that movie. He was the lead. He was the lead in that movie. Uh, <laughs> Timothy Chalamet, though, is, is another guy that's on that list. Uh, but yeah, um, Dune's got, man, the the list of people like uh, Rebecca Ferguson, who was in The Greatest Showman and Mission Impossible, Rogue Nation and, follow, um, and uh, Fallout. 
uh, Oscar Isaac, Josh Brolin, Stellan Skazgard, David Baptista, Zendaya. Uh, it's got a budget of 165 million. This is, uh, it's been delayed multiple times for COVID. It's coming out October 1st, 2021. Fucking super stoked for this film. Uh, so you have it's no on your summer list, movie? Right? No, it's not. This is Dune's not, not on a, your list? No, it's not. Boo! <laughs> Dune is and, not. And, and I want to see it in the theater. It also, just like in the Heights, it's going to be coming out on HBO Max uh, mm-hmm. simultaneously. This is a fucking in, in the theater movie. So big. Anyway, what's your, what's your thoughts? Well, my thoughts is, so your earliest release is October, so you have no summer blockbusters, no summer anything. Have you, uh, have you met me? Do you realize a lot of the summer blockbusters is shit that I would not want to watch? So, so I mean, I, we, we are in agreement. Top Gun Maverick <laughs> is shit that you do not want to watch. Ah. Uh, because that's a summer blockbuster. So, <laughs> But it's not a summer, but it comes out in November. No, it doesn't. Isn't it August? Well, uh, I've got November 19th of it is when it's coming out. Here, uh, while, while we talk, do you have anything else to talk about Dune and we can jump into yours and I'll, I'll figure out when Top Gun's coming out for sure. Okay, because I don't want to talk about Top Gun. Uh, my next film is actually August 6th and it is The Suicide Squad, also premiering on HBO Max and in theaters, directed by James Gunn. And it's a standalone sequel that follows the comic book roots of Harley Quinn and everybody from the other people, including um, in this movie, Sylvester Stallone is the voice of King Shark. And Idris Alba has taken over for um, Will Smith. Smith, but he plays a totally different character. But yeah, just the trailers for this movie. Wait, 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 looks... wait. Taking over for Will Smith, but playing a different character? What do you mean? He's not playing, what is it, Deadshot or True Shot? No, or... He, he's playing Bloodsport. Well, then he's not really taking over. You mean he's taking over the role of the black guy in the movie? What do you mean he's taking over he, for Will the, Smith? Not the black guy in the movie, the the sharpshooter. Like oh, the dead, okay. Like the... You, you should you should probably fucking qualify that statement if he's not. Well, playing you the should same not character. make assumptions because <laughs> once you assume, you make an ass out of ass you. Ass out of you and me. <laughs> and then we're gonna get plenty of angry tweets. <laughs> I don't care what but, kind of tweets we get, as long as we get them. But um. Yeah, like the, the, I love James Gunn stuff, and this movie just. What else do you like by James Gunn? I love Slither. That's amazing. Uh, Dawn of the Dead, that was directed by Scott Snyder, but written by James Gunn. Gotcha. Like I like the Guardians, and have you ever seen? Don't like other than the Dawn of the Dead. uh, I don't like any of this stuff. Have you ever seen Super? Super. Yeah. No. With Rain Wilson and Kevin Bacon? Mm, I don't think so. Well, watch it. And okay. You'll be a, a you'll be a James Gunn this fanatic. Is, this is me putting it on my list. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> this is me with Top Gun. <laughs> oh, oh, by wait, the way, that's you with Top Gun. <laughs> it's so funny that you say that, and I'm but I'm not going to comment because we're doing video or whatever. <laughs> All right, we ready for my number two? Or are you good? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. I would assume this is also on your list. So, I just want to clarify. So Dune is not on your must, your top five. No, nope, not even an honorable mention. Okay. No time to die. Fucking James Bond. That is my Daniel honorable. Craig. <laughs> He's. It's only an honorable mention. It's only an honorable mention because it's probably the last time you're going to see Bond in the theater because now Amazon owns that shit. Yeah, they paid. A, do you know how much they paid for that? Isn't it like eight billion? Yeah, it's some obscene amount of money i'm surprised jeff bezos didn't just like pull out his wallet and go oh yeah i don't know here's take two-thirds of what's in my wallet right now and bang he owns it um yeah i'm super stoked it's also going to be the last time we see daniel craig as james bond so they're because they're going to be doing a new bringing on a new bond it comes out uh october 8th 2021 uh directed by carrie jojo uh funkanaga so he did uh jane Eyre. Uh, he got a lot of uh, attention for uh, an international film called Sin Nombre. Uh, but most importantly, well, not most, but importantly, he did the first season of True Detective, which yeah, if you've right, seen yeah. all of them, that is the fucking hands down best season. Like it's the one that set the standard and then nothing ever compared. Nothing compares. Um, and he also did Peace <laughs> of No Nation. <laughs> um so I'm super stoked. Like, I mean, you're, they've taken like an indie director kind of approach to this massive. It's got a $300 million fucking budget, man. Like, I am so 
looking forward to this. Like, obviously, we got Daniel Craig returning as James Bond. Uh, I mean, if you haven't seen Layer Cake or Munich or some of his other, I mean, Knives Out is his, his, his latest big blockbuster. Uh, you got Remy Malik coming back, you know, from Bohemian Rhapsody, Mr. Robot. He's coming he is, back? When, when was he ever in a Bond movie? Sorry, sorry, he's not coming back. He, he'll, be, he'll be coming on from the movie Bohemian Rhapsody and Mr. Robot. Uh, we got Leah Sudo. So she is a, a really, really famous French actor. She will uh, be coming back because she was in. She is. Yep, she was Inspector. Uh, <laughs> she's in the French Dispatch, which is coming out uh, from Wes Anderson. Uh, she also was in Glorious Bastards. Uh, Lashana Lynch, who is going to be playing, I think, the first black double O. Uh, so she, and she was in Caf- Captain Marvel, Marvel. And then returning are like Jeffrey Wright, Ben Whishaw, Christopher Waltz, uh, and Ralph Fiennes. And like I said, a $300 million budget. The thing with Bond is it's either going to be fucking awesome or it's not. And like Casino Royale, amazing. And then uh, Spectre, mm, not my favorite. You know what I mean? And then there was, what was the one between? Um, Quantum. Quantum. Quantum Solace. Solace. Also fucking all over the place. So I don't know. Are you stoked to see Bond or what? Yeah. Like uh, it's on the honorable mentions and I do, you know, probably oh. most likely the, the last Bond film in theaters but you forgot anna de amos i believe that's her name she the, the one that was also in knives out with um daniel craig oh yeah 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 yeah. she's in this one too and she's in another film that's in one of my honorable mentions that i think it's going to be award heavy for her which is blonde that yeah that looks really good as well so and she's she's one of the the like I don't want to say but up and coming actors or act that like I keep my eye on that um that are doing like really fucking good work 100 percent. okay right. that's it for me unless you got anything else to say about Bond no I do not my number three is the many saints of New York oh that's the prequel to uh Sopranos pre- isn't it starring yeah. his son yeah, starting uh, starring a sunset in 1967 in the riots of New York, and how you know that uh, that fam, the Sopranos, kind of you know came into power. You know, you got Ray Liotta coming in like in another gangster movie. Nice, good fella style. Yeah, uh, Michael Gandolfini playing his playing Tony Soprano, and written by you know. David Chase is on board as a per the producer and writer and he created it so and I think with a lot of these HBO shows that have made movies like I haven't seen one that ha- has been bad like even the sex in the sh- city shit that I never I never got into I, I still thought the movies did really good well they, and I mean especially when you just talk like dollars and cents they they do well like that's a yeah. fact like, that's why they're doing a third sex in the city even without one of the main characters right so um yeah. and yeah it like, should be good even the that... entourage movie that I'm, they don't really talk about the entourage show anymore but i enjoy the entourage movie i mean again and that that movie suffered from the fact that they waited too long to make it i think in my in my, in my opinion uh it got i think it got stuck in a bit of development hell um this this new film uh the soprano prequel it, it got delayed a bit because of covid i believe for production mm-hmm. i believe mm-hmm. so as well but i think you know I'm all down for a fucking good, nostalgic fucking gangster film. I See, I saw this come up and I was like, that looks like something I want to see. But I mean, considering there's some really great films coming out in 2021, it definitely wasn't on my like top five list and it definitely didn't make my honorable mention list. So that's kind of interesting that you actually have it on your top five list of uh, movies to see. Uh, well, you is know, it, I have, is I have it, better taste than you. <laughs> is it a, a must-see in the theater or is it a... Uh, you're going to be fine to watch it at home. Is it coming out on HBO Max? I'm, I'm going to assume so. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it was on the, uh, like, everything Warner Brothers is supposed to be coming out both this yeah. year, right? So I'm going to assume so as well. Okay. My number three by the one and the only Wes Anderson, The French Dispatch, coming out October 22nd. Uh, I mean, if you don't know Wes's stuff, Life Aquatic, Moonrise Kingdom, Fantastic Mr. Mr. Fox. I mean, I've dressed up, I think, three times as Wes Anderson characters for Halloween. Um, the like, I'm going to have to like list the the cast. So Wes Anderson always has like the most fantastic people in his films. 
Listen to this cast though. Benicio Del Toro, Adrian Brody, Tilda Swinton, Lea Sedon, again, uh, Lea Sedon, uh, Francis McDermott, Timothy Charlemagne, Linda Cordry, Jeffrey Wright, uh, Bill Murray. I mean, Bill Murray's been a bunch of his stuff. Owen Wilson, Liv Schreiber, Elizabeth Moss, Edward Norton, William Defoe, Christopher Waltz again. Like, and the list just goes like on and on and on and on. Like, you you can he'll have like an A list actor that has one line and stuff. It looks so cool. A lot of black and white. You know, monkeying around with aspect ratios again. Uh, so it's got a twenty five million dollar uh, budget. I mean, he's kind of in that range all the time. It'll be super arty, super fun, and fantastically cast. So I'm so, so stoked for like late October. Again, this film got delayed because of COVID. Uh, but yeah, another Wes Anderson movie. His last one was uh, Isle of Dog, which uh, uh, was like kind of like stop, stop motion animation. Or it had some weird type of animation that they used in it. You know what I mean? I'm going to say something, Chris. Um, I think okay. you, you've protested a little too much there. That's I protested. Too, I was super like, in favor of. What do you no, mean? No, no. I mean, like that's two Timothy. Sh- I know. I know. I know. And you're like, I don't like him, but all I his don't. movies are must see for me. <laughs> Trust me, that that irony is not lost on me when I was actually like developing my list. I'm like, this fucking guy. I like the movies he's in too, man. Like, the, he was good in The King. He's good in Call Me by Your Name. Like, I just don't like him when he's on screen. So. Anyway, is that why you have that like, like, mustache going right now? Fuck you! Because <laughs> yeah, it's, it's COVID, and I had to shave my own face. That's why. <laughs> You're just like maybe, maybe I can pull a little, uh, uh-huh, uh-huh. A, a little Ari Hammer and call me by your name for little Timothy Shamra. <laughs> uh, you know what? We don't want to be talking about Mr. Uh, hammer on <laughs> uh, on this show right now. Uh, so right. that's my number three, man. T- uh, uh, unless you want to say anything about it, we're on to yours. No, no, like I'm not. Like Wes Anderson, I enjoy his films, but yeah, they're all rentals for me. I don't go to the theaters for them. Do you, do you have a favorite? Life Aquatic. Life Aquatic's so good, man. <laughs> I thought Fantastic Mr. Fox might be in there because I think it, it'd be one you could like watch with your kids. Yeah, it was good. I, I watched the, um, it was a post somewhere where they're they were talking about the filming of, of that film and he actually had the actors acting out everything while recording the the voiceover so that way it was more authentic oh yeah 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 that that would make a lot of sense just so that it feels their voice sounds like the the actions they're doing or whatever right yeah but uh Uh, yeah okay so what do we got what's your next one my number four which obviously is going to be your number one halloween kills (laughs) <laughs> no, that's not even on my fucking list. I knew it was going to be on your list, though. Come on. It, this was. whole, the whole restart, I honestly, there's one good Halloween movie, and it's the fucking original Carpenter film. That's it, man. Like, I don't know, uh, maybe. I don't know. I think, I think this last one did, like, I enjoyed it immensely. Like, it took everything you liked from the, the first one, with the Carpenter, and kind of didn't turn it on its head, just it propelled it right it just continued yeah that if you if you can't get over the fact that like the guy was in an asylum he broke out he killed a bunch of people they put him back in an asylum that's like fucking next door to the town again and laurie strode couldn't move any oh by spoiler alert if you haven't seen it uh couldn't move anywhere else in the world like i and we had this conversation already so yeah. that's my issue with the, the 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 reboot would you call it a reboot or an extension or what, what would you actually well, it wouldn't be it? a reboot because it's yeah, because uh, a reimagining. It's a new. It's a new what timeline? It's a new timeline. There we go. So, yeah, so like a reimagining, I would say, give or take. Yeah. Um. But yeah, uh, that one is on my list, and that one will be a theater. That one for sure. Is When's that coming out? October fifteenth. Come on, it's nice. fucking so, Halloween. You know it's October. Hopefully, hopefully we can actually see that in the theater. Um, yeah, like I said, uh, I've already said my piece. Uh, on, I like the John Carpenter original. I think it's got awesome stuff. It starts with a great tracking shot and everything. Uh, the rest, meh, we can have that discussion. This, I think, should be on your list. I feel like I fucking don't know you, kind of. Um, Ghostbusters, Afterlife, coming out November 11th. That's my number five, yeah. Okay, so it's on your list. Wicked, wicked, yeah. wicked. That's my uh, last I mean, the fact that it's directed by Jason Raymond uh who did Juno and thank you for smoking he's also Canadian he's from Montreal and he's the son of Ivan Reitman the original director of the first two so that's awesome um 
you know, they've got newcomers, uh, McKenna Grace, who was also in Captain Marvel. She played the young uh, Tanya in I, Tanya. Uh, she's also in this season's, uh, the fourth season of The Handmaid's Tale. Uh, Finn Wolfhard from Vancouver. Lots of Canadians on this list. Uh, Stranger Things, he was in It. Um, and then Paul Rudd is going to make his debut in the Ghostbusters series. But then we're bringing back Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, who's from Ottawa. Uh, Ernie Hudson and Sigourney Weaver, man. Uh, I'm fucking stoked. This is going to be a super fun Ghostbuster movie. I think that I'm glad they have you. Okay, bef- have you? Did you watch the reboot with the the all female cast? Yeah. What I did you think it. of that? I thought it. I actually, I actually enjoyed it. Mm. Right. Like, um, I like that they tried to do their own thing. Right. I think this is going to be truer to kind of the original source material, like almost truer to like the original Ghostbusters. You know what I mean? Yeah, because the kids are fucking uh, Egon's grandchildren. That's right. And I mean, that was a great way to like deal with the fact that he's passed away in real life, right? So mm-hmm. um, I couldn't find the budget for this film, which is odd. Um, like I said, it's almost like we've been kind of like moving. We went, you know, uh, No Time to Die at a $300 million film um, budget. Dune has 165 French Dispatch is $25 million. I'm going to guess Ghostbusters is probably under 60 million like it doesn't look uh, it was 100 million to be maybe? a summer blockbuster film so i'm gonna guess 100 okay well you. when the budget comes out we'll have to we'll have to revisit that i'm gonna say like under 60 and you're gonna say like roughly in the 100 million dollar range yes just um, just for the cgi alone oh uh, yeah fair enough fair enough uh i mean uh yeah it looks good man the trailer looks fantastic um and it'll be good to have like all the original ghostbusters back so i'm stoked for that Anything you want to say? The actual characters, right? 100%, yeah. No, yeah, that was my number five. Because um, who doesn't like a good fucking Ghostbusters? That's right? true. This is true. But, yeah, so I guess I, I'll do my honorable mentions. Sure. Uh, so my first honorable mention was Last Night in Soho, directed by Edgar Wright. That looks Anna cool. Taylor uh, Joy, like Jesse May Lee. Matt Smith about a young girl that's passionate about fashion design and it looks like you don't know what the fuck is going to happen in that movie. Whether she's going back in time, whether she's being possessed, you don't fucking know until you watch it. But yeah, it looks good and I'm a big fan of Edgar Wright and especially his last film Baby Driver, which I thought was awesome. Baby Driver's garbage. Baby Driver's fucking garbage. It's a, a, a film that wants to be something that it's not i was super stoked to see it and it was fucking garbage i turned it off about 30 minutes in so anyway keep going so so you missed all the good parts though. no it was fucking garbage it's fucking way too pretending to try and be something it's not um what else is on that list (laughs) uh one thing a sequel i never thought was going to fucking happen and then that just got an like got announced and made was the matrix four yeah, 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 with Keanu. Yeah, just, just them fucking saying we're making a Matrix Four and bring it back. Who's to who's directing it? Uh, Lana. Lana oh, they, they, they are they are coming back to direct it, right? No, or just both one of them. Of them. Just, just one of them. Okay, just one. Yeah. So so yeah so, like it caught me by surprise, and I'm actually you know out of the Matrix trilogy, there's only really one good movie, which is the first one in my first opinion. First one's fucking dope. So. If this is going to be a new trilogy, this one should kick ass too. <laughs> That's what you're basing it on, eh? Yeah, exactly. Is that right. it for your honorable mentions? Um, there's only one more, and it's uh, the Spider-Man movie. Spider-Man No Way Home. Boring. Hey, I had to put at least one fucking superhero movie here. No, you don't, you don't have to. You don't yeah. have to, but I mean, clearly you felt the need to do so. Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. I figured you thought my whole five lists were going to be the whole Marvel slate. <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't have surprised me. I'll tell you that right now. Especially if you made comments about the fact that, like, I didn't have a movie that started until October. And you're like, what about the summer blockbusters? And I'm like, I don't know. They're shit. And they're not things I want to watch. Um, that said, uh, I do have some summer stuff on my list. It just was on my honorable mention list. I mean, we've already talked about In the Heights, which is coming out through in June, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um West Side Story, which comes out late. I think it might be the Christmas film. Um, mm-hmm. So this, I might think, I think might actually surprise you. Kind of looking forward to Emma Stone as Cruella. Looks kind of cool. Looks kind of like noir-esque. Yeah, 
Yeah, sure. I mean, it got it. Like I said, it's it got an honorable mention. Mention it couldn't get on my top five list. Uh, the Green Knight looks fucking awesome. You know, uh, one of the Arthurian tales or spinoffs from the Arthurian tales. Uh, Wicked CGI. It also has a solid cast in it. And the last duel with Matt Damon and um, what's his name ben there? Affleck, right? Well, Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, and uh, the one that John Oliver is like super in love with, and I always get his name. Oh, right. Adam Driver. Adam Driver. Yeah. <laughs> the one uh, about John two Oliver. French dudes dueling to the death in a trial by combat. I'm like, yeah, that looks fucking amazing, or sounds amazing. I mean, Ben Affleck in not a lead role. Uh, as long as that, what are they gonna do? Do it like with a Boston accent? Like, yeah, I'm French. What he had doing some sword play? Like, I don't know. The, and so that's not my favorite. You're saying actor. it's like Valkyrie, where all the German people had British a- accents. I actually don't have a problem. Uh, I don't have a problem with films where you just cast an actor and they have their appropriate the the accent that they have, and it's unless you can nail an accent properly, don't put one on. Like bad British accents, bad German accents, bad Southern accents. Like when everybody all talks like this. It just pulls the audience right out of the like right out of the story, right? So I would much rather like British actors that are playing like you know SS officers or Gestapo members or whatever just speak with their act with their normal accent and do the acting because uh, that's what really matters. So I mean, those are my honorable mem- m- mentions: Cruella in the Heights, The Green Knight, The Last Duel, and West Side Story. So do you want to take us out of here with your last big gun? Oh, I, I just want to say one thing before we go. I think before, I think... before you go, we haven't even. I still have my last one to say. I, I did my five. Oh, that's it. That's it. So before you, do you want me to do my last one? I'm pretty Go sure ahead. you know what mine's going to be. Uh, yeah, sure. Fucking highway into the danger zone. Top Gun Maverick. Going to see it in the theaters multiple times. Wearing aviators. Pew, 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 pew. Coming out November 19th, 2021. Tom Cruise. Miles Teller, who plays Goose's, Goose's son. son. Yeah. Yeah, Jennifer Connelly, uh, who plays Penny Benjamin, one's one admiral's daughter, Val Kilmer, Ed Harris, John Hamm, with a budget of 152 million. Are we going to feel the need, the need for speed, all the way to the highway to the danger zone? Boo, 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 boo. Yeah, yeah, but I think that need's going to go with the wheelchairs that they'll be strapped on. <laughs> Hey man, Tom looks fucking great, man. He's gonna be, you know, back in the saddle as Pete Mitchell. Yeah. Call sign fucking Maverick, baby. Like if I can age like fucking Tom Cruise, I, I won't lie. Like that'd be fucking amazing. But um, how come? How come they didn't bring back the original love interest? You know? Uh, how, how, yeah. How well, come, I'm not touching that one either. How, how <laughs> come? How come he has to now date a younger woman? Because why, he's why Tom can, Cruise, and that's why the way can't he roll. be age appropriate? But you forget that Penny Benjamin is made reference to in the original Top Gun. That's why the way I said it, the way I did, you know, one Admiral's daughter, Penny Benjamin. Um, and, you know, it's unfortunate. It's going to be directed by Joseph, Joseph Kinski, uh, Kaninsky, uh, Tron Legacy, Oblivion, Only the Brave. Uh, unfortunately, Tony Scott passed away, so, you know, he won't be reprising that role. Yeah, but but this director, he he is one of the most visually appealing directors 100 like he knows how to how to make something look beautiful oh yeah man and he's got like a bunch of cinematography awards he i he actually has like a background in like special effects and stuff like yeah you're 100 percent right like this guy knows how to like shoot like a very visualating stimmy a visually stimulating picture uh which i mean there's gonna be some beach volleyball with the boys playing with the there's boys. no way there's beach volleyball yeah Oh man, I'm so excited to watch this fucking movie like right now. Uh, <laughs> uh, but the Cruz actually did a like flew a, a fighter plane for this, right? That was his big stunt. I think so. Not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and only Tom Cruise gets to do shit like that. Like, yeah, sure, here, take the keys. Fucking make sure you gas it up on the way back. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, um, it, well, isn't his new film being shot in space, and he's actually going into space to shoot it? Yes. <laughs> like. Yeah, I guess. I guess you're right. A fighter jet compared to a fucking spaceship. Yeah, I yeah. guess. I guess like same, same, different, different. He, he's um, probably just gonna be like, "Fuck it!" Like, I don't have time to wait for the the shuttle down. I'm just gonna jump. I'm gonna go free fly. And just get, put a camera on me. Are you uh, Are you gonna come watch Top Gun and uh, you can put uh, the popcorn on my lap or what? A popcorn on your lap and something's yeah. gonna have to cover you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, 
the the one thing I, I was gonna say is um what well, we should we should do a a special episode and I'm, I'm i'm so down for this like i think you should shave your beard and just okay. have that stash go just the that, mustache okay well that stash hard i'll do the same thing okay just one episode video appropriate and we'll do fucking super troopers <laughs> <laughs> just with the stash and, littering in <laughs> kitty cat the reefer meow how's your meow <laughs> bunch, of, bunch of those guys are canadian as well so yeah, yeah. team ramrod <laughs> boom 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 i want a liter of cola anyway other than Top Gun being amazing, go watch the original 1980s film, Get Set for Top Gun Maverick, coming out November 19th, 2021. That's it for me. Boom! Take us away, Scott. And that is our rant for the day. Please like and subscribe to this podcast. You can also reach us and interact with us on social media at How Do You Like That One or email us at How Do You Like That Movie at gmail.com. Top Gun 2, I could watch. You could? I mean, yeah. why, why, couldn't, why, why, why wouldn't you in the first place? Because it's not a propaganda film. <laughs> like the first one is. All right. Yes, the first one. I mean, they actually, the Navy saw a bump in enlistments after that movie. And that was one of the They reasons- were in the theaters. <laughs> <laughs> they, they were literally in the theaters with the sign-up shit. So when the fucking guys got out of the theaters, they'd be like, hey, you want to do it? He just did <laughs> sign up. You're like, yeah. And then next thing you know, six months, six weeks later, you're a fucking cook on a aircraft carrier being like, uh, the closest I got to Kenny Loggins was them playing it on the radio in the mess. You know what I mean? So. Production by Rod Shaver, Vader Monkey Productions.